In this video, I'm gonna show you how to preserve the most amount of dynamic range out of your image. What we're working with here is um, Ursa Mini uh, 4K or 4.6K. And uh, obviously this is shot in log, so we have tons of dynamic range, but the problem is that there's a lot of white in this image. So her shirt is white. These llamas uh, in the back are white. And then there is snow in the mountain in the back, which is also white. So the second I create a very strong S curve or I push my exposure, all of a sudden everything is gonna blow out. So how do we keep that um, intact uh, while um, keeping our image pushed, okay? So that is our assignment. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, create two nodes, okay? In my second node, I'm gonna do my color space transform. So we already know um, the information for our camera. So before we even plug that in, I wanna show you one more thing. I'm gonna go under my settings and here the way I have my project set up is my color science is just set to basically default, which is DaVinci YRGB. So I'm not doing anything there. My timeline color space is set to DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. The reason why I do that is because I absolutely love how every tool behaves because since Resolve 17, all the tools in Resolve are content aware, okay? Meaning that you can use your lift gamma gain in any color space and it will behave accordingly. Before, um, you have to force it to Rec. 7 or 9 for lift gamma gain to work properly, all right? Uh, if you wanna deep dive into what I'm talking about, check out my free training or even better, uh, get my masterclass. For your output color space, I'm gonna force it to Rec. 7 or 9 gamma 2.4 you can also leave it to same as timeline. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so once uh, we are set here, one more thing that I wanna look at, um, tetrahedral. Okay, so for 3D lookup table interpolation, change it from a trilinear to tetrahedral because it's gonna render your LUT uh, much better. And now that we have that set up, in my input color space, I'm gonna go ahead and select um, design 4.6K uh, film, Gen 3, and then here I'm going to select uh, 4.6K film, okay? And then here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select Rec. 7 or 9 for my color space, and in this one, we're gonna select Cineon Film Log. Why are we doing that? Because we're going to apply a film LUT. Once again, if you wanna learn more about that, check out the free training, or better yet, get the master class. Let's go under Film Looks, and uh, I'm gonna be going with the Kodak 2383 D60, okay? Uh, which is a film print emulation. And already this looks very nice. What I wanted to actually show you is I have this LUT right here applied onto this clip. And the reason being is because this is our Rec. 709, okay? So this is a LUT from Blackmagic uh, that does a Rec. 709 conversion from log. And this is what it's supposed to look like, okay? And uh, this is where we're at so far after applying the uh, film print emulation. So what a rookie would do is this. They would create a node after their conversion and their LUT. And then in here, they will do something like that. They will take their gain and they'll raise it. So look what's happening when I raise my gain. Look how everything is getting clipped out, okay? That information here is getting blown out. This is not coming back. So somebody could say, well, I like it like this, and then I can take my lift and I can pull it down like that. And hey, Kazi, um, I really love the contrast that I'm getting here. Okay, that's fine. What we can do is we can right click and uh, grab a still. So let's just save that still. We can also add this as a version. And now a proper way to approach this would be what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna delete this node. I'm gonna go pre-node um, before our CST. And once again, why that is important, I'm not gonna get into that in this video. You can watch it in my free training or in my full masterclass. Links are gonna be in the description. So let's just name these. And then these are going to be our adjustments. So here, what I want to do is this. I do not want to use my gain. Well, 
one advantage of making adjustments before your CSD and your LUT is this. Like, look, at if I do the same changes I made before, I'm not blowing out anything, you see? Because the LUT is making sure that everything stays inside the bounds, right? Um, that the LUT has created with the curve. So see, everything stays in. So that is a one huge advantage, but we're just not gonna be using left gamma gain. What I wanna show you instead is using our custom curve. And let's just jump in and start messing with it, okay? So we're gonna create bunch of points in our curve, okay? Because I wanna have a mad amount of granular control. So just look at what I'm doing, okay? I'm just gonna keep adding these points and then I'm gonna keep adjusting it how I like it. So I'm gonna keep doing something like this, bring that in, and I think it's looking pretty good, but you know what? I wanna kinda go in and create a really strong contrast, okay? So I like that more. I'm definitely liking that more. And um, let's see where we sit. This is kind of nice. I want to go deeper, okay? So I'm going to do something like that. And now I'm starting to like, um, I really, really like what's happening now, okay? So what do we want to do? Do we want to kind of push that out? This is looking very, very nice, okay? So I like that. Now the advantage of this is, <laughs> look at our highlights now. Everything is intact, okay? Hence the title of this video, preserving our dynamic range. We're pushing the F out of this image. Nothing is blowing out, okay? Look at that. So I can even push it like this and everything looks good. So at this point, I see way too much yellow and everything is sitting in these two quadrants. I don't like that. So I'm going to go under my printer lights. I'm going to make sure that my printer light hotkeys um, are turned on. And then all I'm going to do is subtract one or two red, and then I'm going to subtract some yellow. So I'm going to keep subtracting some yellow and maybe I can add one red. That's okay. And um, maybe I can add one yellow. So let's just keep some of the yellow in there. It's, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm, I'm fine with it. And now that I'm looking at it, I feel like I can push the contrast a little bit more. So like the contrast adjustments that we can make, like I said, would be something like this, right? So we can keep pushing the contrast and create a very, very strong S curve. And let's see what we want to do here. I like when it dips like that. I want to create another point here. Maybe I want to create another point here. Don't be afraid of just getting very, very granular, okay? That's what I'm doing right now. So look at this, what we just created. Now look at how we're maximizing our dynamic range. So right now we're working in SDR, but even if I were to convert it to HDR, uh, we would have an image that's really nicely pushed. Okay. Once again, I kind of want to like take this and push it down and I want to keep working on that. I want to keep taking these points and uh, kind of just pull them down like that because I like it. I just feel like uh, it enhances uh, the, the dynamic range between the darkest to the brightest areas, right? Um, I just want to make sure that my hero doesn't look too dark. So I'm going to bring that up a little bit, but I don't mind the one side being dark and the other one just like popping like that. Guys, look at it. Okay. We didn't add any saturation. We didn't do any other adjustments. Okay. And somebody can say, well, you just spent like five, six minutes creating this curve. Well, the beautiful thing about this is that this is my look DNA. This is done. I am set. So once I lock this in, this could be applied on a group level and then that is going to be my look. And then everything underneath, I can go in and make offset level adjustments to bring up the clip up and down uh, in exposure uh, to match it, you know, one shot to the next. But this is the heavy duty. This is the heavy lifting that we did. So now if I were to go to what the 
amateur has created here compared to what we just created. I mean, just look at the difference. And don't you think we did not sacrifice anything? Like our dynamic range is intact. It's right up there. Yet we kept everything um, right on the cusp as it belongs, right? Like look at this. Even after blowing out the highlights and blowing out and crushing uh, the blacks, the image does not have the color density. It does not have the depth that we have here, right? And then here, what we can do is we can do half printer light and I can still do um, subtract half yellow. And I like what I'm seeing now even better, okay? So this is where we're at. I literally still think that we can push our like right here, I think we can go up a little bit and keep working that uh, not too much. Uh, but even something like this, it's uh, it's pushed. It definitely is pushed. But I think I like what it does to my image. And um, look at it. Right? Uh, what happens if we do half cyan, if we just add half cyan? Um, I think I don't mind it. I think this even looks kind of cool. What if we do half magenta? Um, I don't know. It doesn't look bad. I even like that. Um, I like that. And we, we can look at our vector scope, right? Like how everything is just like really nice well-balanced, uh, yet it has a very, very strong look, right? Without making it look cheap. So if I go here, right, um, a beginner's grade, there's, there's technically things that are wrong here, right? Like things are clipping, so that's one. And two, just look at how, how thin the image is. Like look at the skin tones, right, compared to this. Um, and since... So let's do this. I'm going to go here. Um, I'm going to do the reference. And then what we can do is we can go here, um, right? And get rid of this and kind of look at the two images. So let's hide this and look at that. So, you know, now if we want to bring up our image, we can add another um, node and lift up our mids. But that's not very important because where the skin is sitting is where the skin is supposed to be, okay? Because if I come out and like this, and if I hover over, make sure that my qualifier is turned on, and then I want to pull up my scopes right here. And guys, just focus on this scope right here, and I'm going to hover over her skin, okay? So with her complexion, her skin should be sitting where it is right now it should not be any higher, okay? It should be between 384 to 512. And look at it. That's exactly where it is, all right? And here, this is just not correct. But once again, when we go to our split screen, just look at the two images, how much detail we have in the sky, the separation that we have. Look at even the brightest areas are not blown out. Same thing right here, they're not blown out. And uh, look at the colors, look at the color density, all of that, okay, the way it was done. So hopefully you guys took away uh, quite a bit from this tutorial. Now, I kept referencing, like, if you want to learn and, you know, dig deeper, uh, then either get my course or check out the free training. So I do want to take a second and tell you guys that right now I have a special offer for the Memorial Day sale. It starts today goes on until May 30th. You're getting $300 off my masterclass. Again, four day sale. So doors are going to close soon on that. So not only you get 211 pre-recorded lessons that are part of this section right here, the masterclass, you also get weekly coaching videos that are tailor made to you. You also become part of a Facebook community uh, of 5,000 students slash colorist. It's an exclusive community. You get major discounts on products like Color Lab AI, Dehancer, uh, Film Convert, Shot Deck, Motion VFX, DaVinci Resolve, and the list goes on. The whole purpose of this course is not to just teach you color grading, but 
get you to a point where you can actually get a job and become either a freelancer or full-time colorist, okay? No color grading experience required because the way this class is uh, laid out, I'm gonna take you from start to finish and everything in between, all right? Um, you can go check out the link and at least just go through um, these reviews, people's experience, because I'm telling you, there is a laundry list of like just people getting unachievable results. Like seriously, it's, it's unreal the kind of results people are getting. So go ahead, take your time, go through uh, all the testimonials here. It comes with a certification. So anybody that cares about that, the certification is included. And to top it off, uh, I'm throwing in a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, reach out to me, let me know if there's anything that I can help you with, or I can just get your money back. Absolutely no problem. On that note, guys, if you're enjoying the content, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. And just remember, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. I will see you guys in the next video.